I want to answer this question. Can you get the EV3 robot to consistently turn by some given angle without using sensors? If your plan calls for a 90 degree turn to reach the target and your robot makes an 85 degree turn, that might not be good enough to get you where you need to go. Here is an EV3 robot. There are two driven wheels and in back are two idler wheels that do not pivot around. So they roll when the mo robot moves straight forward, but they're dragged sideways when the robot turns. Here is a simple program to control the robot using the move tank block. In this program, we set motor B to a forward speed of 20, motor C to a reverse speed using negative 20, and we set the rotation angle to be 175 degrees. In this case, one wheel turns forward 175 degrees and the other wheel turns backwards by the same amount. And that causes this particular robot to spin around 90 degrees, so it ends up at a right angle to where it started. If you do that four times, you should end up back where you started. Looks reasonably close this time. Will it always work that way? What happens if we try this on a piece of unfinished plywood? It ends up turning quite a bit less than it did before, and you may notice each turn wasn't consistent either. It might depend if the wheels drag along the wood grain or across it. Just for fun, what if we try the other side of the plywood? This side may be better, but the result is still different from the finished floor. You might wonder if the motor is to blame if it isn't turning the same amount each time. It turns out this LEGO gear motor has a built-in shaft encoder and it measures its rotation angle, and the motor keeps turning until the output shaft has reached the angle you set. There is about 7 degrees of mechanical slop or backlash, but that's it. It's pretty clear the idler wheels cause a lot of drag when they are dragging sideways across the rough plywood. We can minimize that drag if we mount a rear wheel at right angles so it just rolls instead of dragging. Let's try doing a full 360 degree circle with this new setup. If the 90 degree turn for the robot needed the wheels to turn 175 degrees, we should get a full 360 with a wheel motion of 175 times 4 or 700 degrees. When we try it out, it turns out that we need about 4% less or 673 degrees. So the sideways wheel drag had about a 4% effect even on a smooth floor. Okay, if we get rid of sideways drag, will turns always be accurate? All we control directly is how far the wheels turn. How far that makes the robot turn depends on several other things. One is how far apart the wheels are. Let's say we figure out how far to turn the wheels, maybe distance A, to turn the robot 90 degrees. If we then put the wheels twice as far apart, turning the wheels to that same distance A would only rotate the robot half as much. So for a consistent turn, the distance from the robot's center to the point where the tire contacts the ground must remain exactly the same. Can we figure that out? This robot has tires that are marked as 28 millimeters wide, and that is what I measure. The inside edges of the two tires are 92 millimeters apart, so the robot's center to tire contact distance might be anywhere from 46 millimeters out to 46 plus 28, or 74 millimeters, depending on exactly where on the tire surface it actually makes the contact with the ground. That is a huge range. So, where is the contact point? If you put the robot on a flat piece of glass and look through it, you can see where the tire contact happens. The rubber looks darker where it makes contact with the glass. On this tire, we can see there are contact patches along both the inside and outside edges of the tire. That's a problem, because there is no single answer to that center to contact distance. If the robot turns, from geometry we know at least one of those contact patches has to break free and slip. We can actually calculate where the effective contact point is knowing the wheel diameter, 56 millimeters, and the 673 degrees for the full circle. The wheels traveled pi times 56 millimeters times 1.87 rotations equals 329 millimeters. So the circular track diameter is a 104.7 millimeters. That means on the floor, the effective tire contact point was close to, but not quite on the actual inside contact patch. So in practice, both patches were slipping against the surface as the robot turned, and the outside patch was slipping farther. If you force the robot to run on just the inner edges of the tires, it would turn more because it runs around a smaller circle. If you use only the outer edges, it wouldn't turn as much. If you put the robot in an actual bowl, it's on the outside edges, and it doesn't even go three quarters of the way around. Of course, a real table isn't curved that much. This piece of plywood is somewhat curved, it doesn't lie flat. If I turn it over so the convex surface is facing up and run the robot, it works about like it did before, sometimes going a little farther.
If I flip the board back over so it's like a bowl with the concave side facing up and run the same program again, you can see that the robot does not quite make it around. Each time, it is not quite making it. The only change we made here was which side of the plywood board we used. Now, I would expect a normal table surface to be more accurately flat than my warped piece of plywood, but any little bump on the table or flex in the wheel axle means different loads on the inside and outside edge of the wheel, and that means the contact patches slip by different amounts, and that changes the final robot rotation angle. If the contact patches are always slipping, how can robots make reliable turns?